Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Leon and today we're going to be talking about Gigabyte's next generation motherboards. That would be the 100 series Skylake platform. In front of me here, I have a Z170X Gaming G1. Now this is a flagship motherboard that we want to introduce to you guys and we'll just do a quick unboxing and overview for all of you guys to see. So straight off uh, with the box, you actually get this uh, very, very flush premium look. Uh, it has a see-through casing for you and on the other side you can see the motherboard for all it is. So we'll, we'll bring the motherboard out a little bit later and then we'll show you the little features that's on the board. For the time being let's go around the box and you can actually see what it has. So just to start off from the front you can actually see that it does have that new Intel chipset logo, the Z170. So we are on the new platform now and this new platform is the one that supports DDR4. Now DDR4 was actually introduced with the X99 platform but now with Skylake it's actually um, eligible to use DDR4 or DDR3 and that's based on manufacturer specifications. The next thing I'd like to point out is USB Type-C. Now USB Type-C is the world's next universal connector and it'll be it's able to support multiple protocols such as Thunderbolt 3, USB 3.1, as well as um, video and audio output. And as you can see right here, USB 3.1 is also one of the features that we'd like to note out. And with this flagship board, you're also, of course, going to get a GC USB 3.1 bay. Now, this is actually gives you the ability to have 3.1 capabilities in the front of your chassis. So rather than reaching to the back, you're able to connect this into a, uh, one of those 5.25 front bay ports, and you'll have your Type-C as well as a standard A connector for your use. So that's in there, which is great for all of you users that don't have time or your computer's in a compact space. You're not able to reach around the back. You can actually stick that right in front. Now, moving on to the back of the unit board, you can actually see you get an overview of the board. Looks very nice with the composite armor that we've included this time. So some of you guys might have seen some CES coverage. You can actually see the PCI Express lanes looks a little bit different, and we'll cover all of that when we get to the board a little bit later. Uh, some of the other key features are on here, such as our extreme Intel USB 3.1 controller. Now, Gigabyte is actually one of the only manufacturers that's using the official Intel USB 3.1 controller, which allows us to have the maximum bandwidth. So for the controller itself, it's able to support up to 32 gigabits per second. Now that's uh, four Gen 3, uh, Gen 3 PCI Express lanes, which allows for that speed. But as you all know, USB 3.1 only supports up to 10 gigabits per second on transfer speed. But that 32 gives us that total bandwidth to do anything that we need to do with it. And of course, the Type-C connector, which allows you to do different features such as power delivery as well, something that I didn't talk about earlier, so you can charge your mobile devices or even more power-hungry devices, as well as transfer data uh, between uh, your next generation devices as well. We also have the Creative Sound Blaster, so this is a Creative Sound Core 3D. Now many of you guys that have been following Gigabyte Technologies, you guys know that we do have exclusive Gigabyte Amp Up Audio Technology and this is one of those. Gigabyte was one of the first manufacturers to actually incorporate a quad-core chip onto our board to eliminate the need for uh, dedicated sound cards for users that were very into the audio scene. So any audio files out there, this is definitely something you want to look into. We also have certified for this board 120 decibels SNR uh, out of the rear uh, audio 3.5 jack. So that's one of the other features we'd like to talk about. And of course, with any gaming board, we want to focus on networking as well as audio. So we talked about the audio. Now with networking, we're able to have two killer NICs as well as uh, another uh, Wi-Fi NIC available for those of you guys that like to do any type of packet prioritization. The software is of, of course included, so you can find that on the driver disk as well. And just to go over this more briefly, uh, we do have triple upgradable op amps. We're using NicheCon as well as Wema, uh, Wema capacitors. And we have an LED trace path that is now multi-colors. And then this board sports a 22-phase digital power design as well as uh, dual PCIe M.2s, a Turbo B clock, PCIe metal shielding, 
and threaded fittings for any of you guys looking to do any customization for your system on liquid water cooling. So let's get into the box and see what you guys get when you guys purchase one of these bad boys and you guys can see if it's something you want to look into at your online or retail store. So right out of the box you can actually see very premium packaging. Very premium packaging. It comes in, you pull it right out and right here is a board for you. And we'll take this out, plastic shielding, and let's just take the board out and we'll put it off to the side for a little bit. Okay. Right here. And let's see what we get inside the back box. So right off the bat, you can, you can actually see you get this premium casing. We have our, our 3.1 bay. I'm just going to put that to the side. We have a SATA Express connector, three sets of braided SATA cables, and these have your straight through cables as well as a 90 degree cable for you to use. You have a crossfire as well as SLI bridge, and you have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna for you to use. So this board does come with Wi-Fi like we mentioned earlier. It uses uh, Killer's Double Shot Pro X X3 and it allows you to use multiple LAN configurations. So in the box, there are some more goodies. Another bridge for a three-way SLI. A G connector, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Also, a padded I.O. And you can actually see there's some cables here, and we'll talk about that as well. A four-way SLI bridge. A multilingual installation guide an owner's manual with the driver discs of course and any other peripheral software for your wireless some screws for you to use and right here a cap and plugs and as well a U.2 connector and of course a little sticker to do some promoting as well as to show off to your friends that you're using a gigabyte gaming motherboard. So all of these things we can cover very quickly. You have your graphics connectors, you have your antenna, braided SATA cables, additional SATA express cables for you to use, the USB 3.1 just to give you guys a quick look at it. Right here, so you have your standard A as well as your Type-C and it's connected via that SATA Express connector right here that's provided as well. So you can do add additional power for your standard SATA power connectors and then use your SATA Express. Okay, drivers, multilingual. And then also we have our G connector. And this connector is very useful. This actually lines up with the front panel headers. And let me actually show you guys so you can actually get a close look. It lines up with your front panel headers so you can actually connect your pin headers before even installing uh, after installing the motherboard into the case so you don't have to reach around. And what's really neat about the design is we've actually designed it so it has a lower profile. Rather than having pins already inside, this actually accepts your case connectors. Alright guys, so we just looked through the box and now we know what you guys are going to get when you get a Z170X Gaming G1 board. Now let's talk about the board and the different unique features that you'll find on it that Gigabyte has provided to you. So straight off the bat, you can actually see it has a great uh, appeal to it this time around. And with all the composite armor over it, it gives it that new flashy feel. We have the G1 Gaming branding on here. We also have uh, it covering the rear I.O. as well as the composite armor covering the back uh, exclusive Gigabyte Amp Up Technology audio zone. Um, and also with that, we have the heat sink here. Now these heat sinks are actually very beefy. When you get a feel for it, you lift it up, it actually has some weight to it, so you know it has a lot of quality in it. Um, these heat sinks are designed for active and passive water cooling, uh, active and passive cooling. So as you can see, I just removed one of the plugs and these are threaded fittings. Now these fittings are able to support G14 threaded uh, threads so if you have any liquid cooling barbs, if, you if you're buying a kit, make sure you buy the one that fits for this board. It allows you to do customizations if you want to use thinner tubes or thicker tubes, which is a good thing for gamers and any DIY modders that want to do any case mods for their system.
All right, and again, remember this is an LJ1151 socket CPU. As you can see here, it's listed perfectly. And with this board, there's actually 22 power phases. These are 22 digital power phases. We're using uh, the digital power controller from IR, International Rectifier. That's the fourth generation, as well as third generation MOSFET from them as well, which is under the heat sinks that you see here. Now, Let's go over the top and then we'll go around the board to see what else we have new. So right here actually, we have a fan pin header, your CPU pin headers for our eight pin for additional power for that CPU. And then we have a four pin pin header right here up at the top. Now, this one is actually used for that rear IO that we were talking about. Now this is the padded IO. It has a really good premium feel to it. And this time around, you can tell that it has four cables to it. Previously with our X99, there was actually two plugs and it allowed the IO to light up. Now this time, the IO can actually light to multiple different colors since we have RGB controls and these will match what your system provides, uh, what you set in your BIOS or what you set through App Center. Uh, and it can also beat as well as pulse to however the board uh, lights up as well. <clears throat> All right, and moving right along, we have some pin headers for CPU fans. And this one is a DDR4 board, guys, so make sure you guys are using that new standard when you guys are purchasing components uh, for the Z170X Gaming G1. We have some contacts here for your overclocking or if you need to read any voltage readouts. We have a quick power button, power switch, a debug LED here, a reset switch right under this, a CMOS switch, if in case you ever need to use it, you want to reset your CMOS um, right there. We have an Eco and OC button. The Eco one actually downclocks the system, so you're saving some power. The OC gives you a quick overclocking boost. If you're not familiar with overclocking, you can definitely use this button. Or even in the App Center, we have an application called EasyTune which will allow you to do any overclocks, uh, preset overclocks that we've actually specified for your system. So that's a good that's a good solution and tool for you guys that want some extra speed out of your computer. One of the other things here, we have your standard ATX24 pin, another set of fan pin headers, and we also have USB 3.0s, so two USB 3.0 front panel headers, that gives you a total of four USBs. And then on the side here, of course with next generation form factors for storage, we have with the 100 series chipset, it supports natively three SATA Express connector, so you actually see the one, the two, and the three. So keep in mind, when you guys are actually using SATA Express, you're gonna be losing the two SATAs because it's gonna be covered with the connector, okay? So SATA Express, we have some more fan pin headers down here, and then your front panel headers. And again, this is made a lot easier for installation with the G connector like we talked about earlier. Not only that, the G connector uh, actually locks in and clips down on your front panel pin header so when you actually plug it in and you want to remove it, it's easily to be removed as well as installed. Okay. <clears throat> we have some switches down here. One is for your dual BIOS. So whether you're switching from uh, your main BIOS to your secondary BIOS or back, uh, this will allow you to do that. So if you run into any issues and your system is not booting, you can definitely use this switch to solve your problems as well. We also have another switch here, another uh, dip switch, which allows you to actually disable your dual BIOS function. So the dual BIOS function, sometimes uh, if you're trying to do any overclocking and your system actually takes control um, and it actually overwrites your overclocking settings, this is something you might want to enable so that way you don't lose all the work that you've done earlier. We have two USB 2.0 headers. So that's another total of four USBs. And then we have a TPM pin header. Now the TPM stands for Trusted Platform Module. And this is just for security for you guys that want some extra security on your system. And then we have an OC peg right here. This provides more power. It allows you to connect a SATA power connector to provide more power for the PCI Express lanes so you have a more stable flow of electricity so there's less fluctuation when you're running your system. And then two more connect uh, switches here, and these are actually for gain switches. One is for your rear, and one is for your front. So if you're using anything, uh, it allows you to toggle between your 2.5x or 6x gain, which uh, if 
any of you guys are using professional headphones, you guys require more output to it. It actually supports up to 600 ohms. So this is definitely something that you want to be aware of, especially with this board having such focus on audio, um, having independent uh, left and right op amps for its rear channel, as well as another uh, op amp for its front panel. <clears throat> And then, of course, we're getting to that Soundcore 3D chip. We're talking about all of the technology here. Uh, we have the front panel pin headers. Uh, Gigabyte is actually one of the first and only motherboard manufacturers to actually incorporate a quad-core chip onto the board. So you guys are now no longer needing the fact of having to buy an, an additional dedicated sound card. And this is something that we've added for gamers who actually focus highly on networking and audio. So this is one of the cool features there. Uh, we have some op amps here, and then you guys are seeing this, and you guys are wondering, whoa, what's, what's up with the PCI Express lanes? These are actually covered with a one-piece stainless steel shielding. Now, this metal shielding is actually useful for you guys in, in two ways. First of all, it's actually protecting your PCIe slot to prevent any damage when you guys are putting in heavier graphics cards. It won't bend or rip out as easily. Also, if your sh unit's being shipped, it's it's useful to help prevent any damage from cards falling out as well. And then we also have, with this uh, one-piece stainless steel shielding, it actually prevents any possible EMI or ESD damage to your card or to your board. So it's helpful to, pr uh, to protect your more expensive components on the board. Right? We also have some M.2s here. So again, going with your next generation storage, M.2 is really the next new thing with NVMEs and everything like that. And with these M.2s, we're actually using a socket 3, um, and it, it, it's an M key. And speaking of M.2s, a lot of you guys might be seeing some new technologies out there. With this board we talked about earlier, you're going to be getting an M.2 to U.2 connector. Now this adapter allows you to actually connect to your M.2 slot and you can actually, after you connect it, then connect your 2.5 inch uh, U.2 uh, U.2 connector and connect it to the 2.5 inch NVMe drive. So this is very useful for those of you guys that still want that traditional uh, 2.5 inch drive and you need a connector that can support the 32 gigabit bandwidth. Okay. All right. And we also, lastly, have a Turbo B clock chip. Now, this chip is actually very important for those of you guys that are into overclocking. You guys are trying to push the performance and limits of your board because what it does is it actually provides you a linear range uh, that you can move through from 90 megahertz to 200 megahertz. Traditionally, the boards were only allowed to go from 100 to 125 and 167. These were the straps that you were limited to. And with this chip, you're actually uh, breaking away from that 5% threshold left and right of each strap. So you can now actually choose to have a 140 megahertz base clock with your board and overclock to whatever settings you like. All right, so let's turn this around and then we'll go over the rear I.O. and see what other features we have. And then you guys can see what else there is. One of the other things I wanted to go over because I know you guys always have a lot of questions about is how many system fan headers do we have? And of course, just to count off here, we have the one, we have two, we have three, four, and five. And of course, for the CPU, we do have a CPU fan pin header as well as an optional fan pin header if you're looking to do a water pump and you need to have full power all the time. And these are, of course, PWM fans where you have controls through either the App Center or even our BIOS. So let's swing around to the rear I.O. so you guys get a better look of it. And that way you know what you have on connectivity for the rear. So aside from that, We've also uh, we've spoken about the I/O shield uh, that can do the RGB colors, and right here we also have the USB DACs, right here, and this is uh, two USB 2.0 connectors that actually have its own power grid. So if you guys are interested audiophiles out there, gamers, um, this is perfect for externally powered DACs, so you can actually shut off the power and get a cleaner signal. For gamers who have any powered, self-powered devices for keyboards or mice, you can definitely use this as well. Or even if you need power from the system, this does have that cleaner source of power because it's on its own power grid. So you get a cleaner signal overall with less fluctuation. You have your traditional PS2. 
also a Wi-Fi connectors right here uh, and we also include a little clip that allows you to lock in your cables for your antennas and to remove this there's actually a little screw hole right here to actually let you unscrew and you can get inside and reach that M.2 wireless module. <coughs> right here we have a HDMI and for all of you guys who love HD, who love where all of this is going with the high definition, this HDMI is actually an HDMI 2.0. This means it allows you to actually display 4K content at 60 frames per second. So if you guys want to do a movie night, anything like that, this is definitely some this is the board that you want to get because it has that ability to do so. And then right next to it we have four USB 3.0s for any transfers, any external storage that you guys might need. Below it, a Type-C connector. Now this is the Type-C connector we were talking about earlier where it has all those various protocols, uh, mainly being that you'll see it being used for USB 3.1, as well as Thunderbolt, and also for data, audio, or video transfer. <clears throat> And right next to it, you have a type A, a standard A connector in red, and this is also USB 3.1. So Gigabyte does support both types of connectors for your USB 3.1 needs, so you're future-proof, but at the same time, you have the flexibility to use a traditional standard A connector. And above that, this one, some of you guys might be very familiar with. You guys probably have seen it in our X99 boards. This is actually a connector for our QFlash Plus. Now, QFlash Plus is a feature that allows users who have accidentally corrupted their BIOS or who need a new BIOS when the CPU isn't working properly to actually flash the BIOS. And all you have to do is connect a flash drive and you don't even need to have your CPU or memory installed and the system will flash the BIOS on its own. So it's a very neat feature for the, those of you guys that are in a jam and don't want to send your board off to RMA uh, and to get it repaired or replaced. <clears throat> And of course, above that Q flash, you see multiple NICs. So this is, of course, Killer NICs. And this makes up our Killer Double Shot Pro X3, which is actually the feature where we combine the two uh, wired NICs with the wireless NIC as well. So you get three network connections and interfaces for this board total. Um, two more additional USB 3.0s on the back, as well as your audio connectors. And you please note that this is actually in gold. So these are gold plated to help prevent any corrosion, any uh, tarnishing, and it gives that better signal quality for those audio audio files that are always looking for the best. So all of these things, plus all of the accessories that you guys have seen earlier, wrap up what you would get in our Z170X Gaming G1 board. So if you guys are definitely interested, you can find it at your local retailer or online re reseller as well. So definitely check it out. And if you guys like the video, please like at the bottom, subscribe to our page, any feedback we love to hear from, and we're going to be showing you a lot more videos, so look around on the, our channel for that. Thanks.